Welcome to Bet on the College Edition. I know you guys really loved our NFL show. So we made a college show. I'm Kelly Stewart, your host tonight. We're going to break down this week's college football card, which coincidentally only has one game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined by Marco D'Angelo at Marco in Vegas. Vegas runner, Yanni the Greek, at Greek underscore gambler on Twitter. Let's talk this Army-Navy game. Um, as a K-State fan, I'm all of a sudden vested in this game because Navy plays K-State in the upcoming Liberty Bowl a few weeks from now. So maybe I'm going to watch a little bit more Navy. I got a, co a couple of times this year I got to catch this team. But they've been absolutely owned by Army this last few years, Marco. Yeah, well, before that, they it had was, won. Yeah. They won 14 in a row, Kelly, uh, Navy did. And now they've lost three in a row. And what that means, losing three in a row, the senior class for this Navy team this year could be the first to lose their entire college career to Army. That that doesn't set well with them. I and mean, those kids is, usually go all four years pretty yeah, much, right? They're not yeah. the kind of leave early. In the yeah, they're not, they're not running to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you know you got a big motivational factor. Now, this is one of the biggest rivalries uh, in college football. It gets its own day spotlighted, you know, as the only game on the card. Uh, they're fun to watch. And I know that we'll have our, our buddy in later, uh, Ralph Statman, and uh, he's been all over Twitter this week with all kinds of different stats. I actually have his all of his bold notes right here. Yeah. It, it is absolutely incredible. If you head over to wagertalk.com, you can get it for free as well. The the numbers here are mind-boggling. The mind stuff boggling. he gives away for for free. I, you know, sometimes I just want to slap my face. You know, we got to sell <laughs> some of this Idiot. stuff, Ralph. Come on. <laughs> you know? Uh, this is a spot, though. The total, anybody that's followed this history of this, the total, what is it, 13 in a row to the under? This is going to be wow. one, of, this is one of the smallest unders that you have in College the history, football, yeah. uh, you know, in the history of this series. But the reason that they always go under, think about it, we know they can score. When you watch Navy, when they're playing all during the year, they're scoring points up and down the field. They play in a conference that doesn't play good defense to start with, and then you got to try to stop a gimmick offense that goes up and down the field, and the teams that are playing them, who are in our conference? Teams like SMU, Memphis, teams that like to go at a fast pace. Well, now you're getting your scoring fast, you're giving the ball right back to Navy, and Navy's, you know, getting those chunk plays, you know, eight, nine, yeah. ten-yard runs. Well, now when you play Army-Navy, you've got two teams that are going at the same speed. We run the ball, we run the ball, we run the ball, and they know how to defend. Because they, yeah, they the practice offense. against they it. They practice against it every day. So now you've got two teams going at a slower pace in those plays that were going for seven, eight, nine yards against normal opponents. Now we're only going for three or four yards, so you're more methodical going down the field. And the whole time you're doing it, man, that clock's just spinning away tick, and spinning tick, tick, away. Tick, tick, so that's yeah. why you've got the unders. And finally, Vegas is, you know, they're just tired of getting their lunch handed. Well, you don't the, say the, 13 straight unders. Yeah, you, know, you, you keep dropping it. They may have finally brought it to no a point where No one's rushing to back the over here. Yeah, nobody is, but it might just get there. I'm not going to go there. Where I'm at, I'm going to look at Navy in this one. I think this year the problem with Army – is off of that great year last year, they've had so many injuries at the quarterback position this year. They've had to use four different quarterbacks. Now, people are going to say, what's the big deal about that? You've got, all you do is hand the ball off. They run the ball. No. The quarterback might be more important on an option team than on a regular team because it's all about timing and just quick decisions. Does he keep it? Does he give it to the fullback for the dive? Or... Do they take it outside? And when he takes it outside, does he keep it or does he make the pitch? Those are all timing plays. And when you're shuffling in four different quarterbacks, the players, there's no continuity there. And that disrupts a team and they've had their problems. And uh, don't get excited about the points that they scored the last couple of weeks. Two of those games were against UMass and VMI. Okay? Good stuff. Uh, that's bad football teams, let me tell you. Uh, and then they went in a game that a couple weeks ago, and I know we were all on the same side, I'm pretty sure. Army at Hawaii was the perfect situational play. Hawaii had nothing to play for coming off their biggest game of the year, and then we had the Mountain West Conference Championship game on deck and had to prepare for a team that runs the option. No, I don't want any part of Army.
All right, VR, you uh, mentioned to me that you guys already played this game. Yep. Talk uh, to we, the people. We, we bet Navy minus 10, and, and I think it makes sense. Um, with that said, it's up to 10 and a half now, even some 11s out there. And, and I still wouldn't look to that Army side, even with this low total. This, you got to remember, with a low total like this, this will be one of those games where some books won't even let you bet parlays because of the correlation where – if you're going to bet the favorite, you're probably going to bet it with the over. If you're going to bet the dog, you're probably going to bet it with the under. And there's books that won't take it when the total's this low and the point spread's this high. Um, but I, I personally don't believe that that's necessarily the case all the time. Um, so I don't know why they don't take those bets. But for me, I, I like this Navy side, and it makes sense. I mean, listen, um, last year it was a totally different situation. Navy's been dominating them for over a decade or so, and they had their worst season in a very long time last year. And Army took full advantage. And worse for Navy is they were coming off that one point loss the year prior. So they even had that revenge on top and couldn't get it done. But I think this class, this year's team, is very capable of beating Army by three touchdowns. Um, I don't think Army's going to do a lot of scoring. Uh, so I like the Navy side. I bet it um, myself as well. And I don't bet all of the plays that these guys move on myself. I get a percentage of it anyway, so I cheer it in. Um, but I don't piggyback everything. But I like this play, and I, I took a little Navy plus minus 10 myself. All right, we have a couple minutes left, so let's touch on these playoff games. Oklahoma, LSU. This total was sky high when it came out, 76 and a half. Now we're seeing a little bit of under money coming in. Flip side of the spread, LSU minus 10. Now it's up to 13. I saw 13 and a half yesterday, and I was with John Murray from the West Gate, and I said, if it hits 14, I'm, I'm betting Oklahoma. I have you to. You almost have to. I don't know if it will get back up that high, but we're going to see. You guys, either one of you have a big opinion. I know we're early on, so we have to kind of tread lightly. Yeah, I, I – I initially, my, before I even look at the lines, I'm going to create my own because I don't want to be at all biased by what the odds makers put, decide the game should be. And it's just human nature. You're going to be biased. Um, so I thought LSU should be around a 9, 10-point favorite, right in that double-digit range. Um, but I did not expect that money to come in like that when it came and out at hard, 10. yes. You know what I mean? To push it that quickly. And I get it. 12, they're not key numbers. But it definitely took some limit bets early on um, to get it moving in that direction. And we haven't seen the take back yet. So how far has it got to go before you see any take back? You know, I couldn't lay it now. I, no. I mean, the only way I could look now is to play the dog or pass. And I, I know we're weeks away so much we still going to handicap. We're going to scrutinize this game over and over, this point spread over and over. Um, but the first reaction is that, that it's dog Margaret, or pass Yeah, now. do you agree with that statement? I agree. The public saw Oklahoma struggle with Baylor down to the third-string quarterback and had to go to overtime. So the stock has just fallen so bad. And All right, what else you did. You have 15 seconds. Any sharp action yet on Clemson, Ohio State? No, it was it was it comes down to who you had as one point better. It was some right. guys thought Ohio State's one point better. Others thought Clemson's one point better. And I, it's going to come down to who executes that game plan because the power rating and the point spread is pretty much going to be on point with what anyone has. No one's really going to find much line value based on their power ratings according to that number. All right. I think the moral of that story was hang tight. Yeah. There's lots of time to be able to bet these games. Great stuff, guys. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we're going to look inside the numbers, the biggest line moves from the opening bowl lines.